babe, guys? So today's movie I'm going to be discussing on the channel is the latest Marvel movie, aptly named The Marvels, which is directed by Nia DaCosta. This is the 33rd movie, I believe, in the MCU and is a sequel of sorts to the 2019 film Captain Marvel, which of course starred Brie Larson. But this film is also a team-up movie of sorts of other electromagnetically empowered female superheroes from the MCU. You've got uh, Monica Rambeau from WandaVision who can see and phase through light. And she's played in this film by Bacteona Paris, who's reprising her role from WandaVision. And then you've got Kamala Khan, AKA Ms. Marvel from the TV series, Ms. Marvel, who's played by Iman uh, Villani. Did I say that right? Yes, that's right, Iman Villani. And she has the power of hard light, which I think means she can turn light into physical matter. I'm not a comic book reader, but I believe that's what they said she could do in this movie. Just to clarify, I've only seen the Captain Marvel movie and WandaVision. I haven't actually watched Miss Marvel, so this was actually my first introduction to the character of Kamala Khan and Ms. Marvel, and I thought she was absolutely wonderful in this. I was smitten watching her in this movie. She was a joy to watch on screen. She, she really does light up the screen. I'm not just saying that because she has light powers. Like, she is just so sweet and charming and endearing. She's got this real infectious fangirl energy. I actually thought she was the best character in this movie. Anyway, the plot is the three of them have to team up to stop the villain called Darben, who's played by Zoe Ashton, who, fun fact you guys might not know, is the real life wife of another MCU villain, Loki. Yep, that's right, Zoe Ashton and Tom Hiddleston are married in real life. Anyway, she is from the planet Hala, and she wants to use the quantum bands, or the bangle that you've seen on Ms. Marvel's wrist, to open up these jump points across the galaxy, which will have disastrous consequences for any nearby planets that are adjacent to these jump points. So yeah, it's the three Marvels versus her. I don't know why the internet is getting so worked up about regarding this movie, because I've seen a lot of like, nasty negativity surrounding this film online. And like, this is before anyone even saw the movie. Like they saw the trailer, but yeah, people were disparaging this film long before it came out. And the first reactions that I've dropped over the last few days have been very polarizing, very divisive. I've seen a lot of people saying it's pretty good. And I've seen a lot of people really hating on it. And I saw it just a few hours ago, and I'm gonna say I thought it was pretty flirking good. I don't think it's a great film, and I certainly don't think it's a top tier MCU film, but I still had a fun time watching it nonetheless. The film does have its problems, and I think the main issue that I have with this film is that it's got this ambitious plot where Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, and Ms. Marvel all swap places with each other every time they use their powers and it does get quite jumbled. Like it's a fun idea, but it's a little messy in places. And I don't think there's a strict adherence to the rules in place of them swapping places every time they use their powers. Cause there are times in the film where they are using their powers fighting bad guys and they don't swap every time they use them. So it's just like, why do they swap sometimes, but not all times? The film never really explains it. I didn't get that. I did think the villain Dar Ben was a little bit under bait, which is a shame because I actually thought their motivations for why they were setting up these jump point portals was actually quite interesting because they are trying to like help save their dying family. Okay, there's some noble intentions there. They just don't care who gets in their way as long as they're saving their own people, but Sadly, Darben just doesn't get that much backstory. And when they do get backstory, it's like bullet points. Like it's just really rushed through. And that's another issue with the film is it does feel quite rushed. It's, it's very fast. <laughs> there's not a lot of moments in the film where there's time to breathe. But on the flip side of that argument, for those of you that are complaining about Marvel movies being too long, this film is only an hour and 45 minutes. So it's probably one of the breeziest MCU movies there is. What I really, really liked about this movie was the dynamic of the three lead characters, Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, and Ms. Marvel. They had a lovely sisterly chemistry, but I will say the standout by far and away was still Ms. Marvel. She was just so delightfully adorable in this. She was so good that she actually makes me want to watch Ms. Marvel now. I didn't watch the show, but I want to now just because of her performance in this, if she's Half as entertaining as she was in the film, I can't wait to see what she's like in the TV series. She really was the heart of this film. It's also not afraid to have fun this film. Like there's a scene with all these cat flirking creatures with the memory song from Cats playing in the background and 
This whole sequence had me and Glenn going, aww, and like laughing, like in equal measure. There's also this scene where the Marvels take a trip to this planet called Aladna, which is essentially a planet inhabited with people who speak in the language of song. Like, they just constantly sing to each other. So the planet is like one big musical. That was really amusing. And I also really loved the costume work and the production design in that scene. I will say the visual effects in this film are a little bit hit or miss. Like, there's some scenes where the CGI is absolutely gorgeous. And then there's other scenes where the CGI ain't so gorgeous. So yeah, some scenes have great visual effects, others are a bit lacking. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch it again? Yep, I could happily watch this again. If I ever do do a big old MCU rewatch, I would look forward to watching this one again. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? I will say, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Like, I think going in with low expectations is a good piece of advice for this film because I did, and I ended up being pleasantly surprised by it. Like, I don't think it's great. Uh, but I don't think it's a disaster either. I had a good, fun enough time with it. So, uh, yeah, if you did like the first Captain Marvel movie, check this out. If you liked WandaVision, it's good. If you saw Miss Marvel, I didn't, uh, and like that, you're probably gonna love, uh, what Iman Vellani does in this. She was just, you know, a breath of fresh air in the MCU. So, yeah, if you like any of that, give it a go, I'd say. It's, uh, I, I recommend checking it out. It's a fun time at the cinema. And third question, what score to give it out of 10? I say this is a fun but flawed film in the MCU. It's got some structural and pacing issues, this film, but overall I was entertained by the Marvels. So I'm gonna give uh, the Marvels a score of six out of 10. But as always guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. I would love to hear from you. Have you seen the Marvels? If you have, what do you make of it? Thumbs up, thumbs down, I'm curious to hear. Speaking of thumbs up, if you have enjoyed the video, help me out with a little thumbs up button. If you want more movie, TV, and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe and as always guys thank you so much for watching for more things related to movies tv the oscars and popcorn culture i'm luke airfield and i'll see you next time